Hello there, my fellow spy masters, and welcome back to some 40k lore. On today's episode on the factions of Necromunda, we're gonna embark on another chronicle. A chronicle featuring the history of House the Lack, aka the House of Shadow. If you watched my previous episode on them, you know that these fellows are arguably the most mysterious faction of them all. And today we're gonna go into more detail on the mysteries that surround them. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The origins of House the Lack are no more or less mysterious than anything else about them. Conflicting stories tell of the house rising from the ashes of an old northern hive cluster, or being manufactured at the same time as the Goliaths, or even brought from off-world by Lord Helmor to act as spies. Actual facts on the House of Shadow are as rare as clean drinking water on Necromunda, and those that do exist are often taken for lies, hidden as they are among all the fabrications. Although clan house and noble house records do not entirely agree on the topic, generally the first recorded instance of the Delac occurred at some point in the 36th millennium. During the time of the visit of the rogue planet called Somnus, a dark dream came to Hive Primus as that strange orb passed close to Necromunda in its orbit. Signs and portents are mighty things on Necromunda, and its people do not take them lightly. In some places, the veil between Materium and Immaterium seems to grow thin, and whispers out of the warp penetrate into the real world. It is rumored that this was the source of the Dark Dream, and the visions it sent drew those touched by it from their homes and habs. Scattered reports from the ancient time tell of workers stumbling sightless out of their beds and bunks, and out into the cold night cycle streets. Of overseers leaving the comfort of their counting houses wearing nothing but pajamas. And even children slipping away from their parents and out into the dark. Further confusing matters is the fact that the dreams did not take the victims all at once. There was no single night when the sleepers wandered off altogether nor did a dreamer lose himself all at once. Rather, over years the dreams did their work, until the vanished were counted in their thousands. It was during these vanishings that the name The Lack became associated with the dream. Once again, conflicting sources cite its origin as a powerful Hive City family, a visiting rogue trader, or even an agent of the throne come to investigate matters. There are those who say that whatever or whoever had sent the dreams, and taken so many from their beds, had been searching for a singular will to meet its needs, a will that it found in the Delac. All that is known for certain is that when the vanished returned to take their place in the hive, it was the name Delac that they let themselves be known as. Amid the chaos that followed the visitation of the rogue planet, the Delac found root within the depths of Hive Primus. Like so many other houses, they grew in fits and starts, taking over industries and acquiring territory and people as the power base grew. Unlike other houses, they didn't favor coin or violence to meet their ends, but rather had a knack for convincing others to turn to their cause. It was said that the Delac can whisper in the ear of an enemy and change their mind, an axiom they proved again and again during their ascension to power. Even so, for those first centuries, the Delac remained a shadow cast across the lower reaches of Hive Primus. Fighting and dealing with the other weak players of Necromunda society, and yet dreaming of greater things. Only a few people even suspected their strange origin, and the mystery of the vanished and its connection to the Delac was soon buried under centuries of warfare and endless industry. And yet, change was coming. The forces behind the rise of the Delac, the same forces that saw them spread out to control domes and factoria, were maturing, and with them the house itself was taking shape into something altogether different from anything that Necromunda had witnessed before. Once upon a time, the clan house of Avarest had been a power in Hive Primus, long before the Delac rose out of the shadows, and it is no wonder that its rulers fought little of these newcomers to their home. Having survived the two-faced war when House Helmor turned upon itself, House Avarest became instrumental in re-establishing the gas trade for the Imperial House. 
Its dealings with this psychotropic drug were perhaps one of the reasons it became a target for the Delac. By the beginning of the 38th millennium, the House of Shadow was already infiltrating House Avarest and turning it upon itself. More and more, the Delac were seen in apparent alliance with the leaders of House Avarest. And more and more, these same leaders made decisions that seemed to go against their very nature. Power was being passed over to the Delac and even the industries of the clan house had begun to be altered to better suit the newcomers. The Delag themselves also began to change, becoming paler, hairless, and favoring heavy concealing clothes. Apart from adding to the air of distrust that they elicited from those they had contact with, the changes led the other clan houses to petition the Imperial House to investigate the Delag for signs of warp taint and collusion with dark powers. Late in M38, things came to a head when Vortus Hephrum, the last free lord of Avarest, as he styled himself, called in every favor he had to bring in the full force of the Imperial House and the Adeptus Terra upon the Delac. Far from the righteous crusade of fire and blood that Vortus wanted, a ragged alliance of willing clan houses, bounty hunters, mercenaries, and religious extremists prepared to wage war upon the infiltrators of House Avarest. In the centuries since Vortus's last stand against the Delac, some have speculated a deal must surely have been struck between the House of Shadow and the Imperial House. Because while the war, if it can be called such, did little to dislodge the influence of the Delac within the clan house, it did manage to bring the final resistant members into the light. The forces arrayed against Vortus and his army are only referred to, if they are referred to at all, as the Crawling Shadow a term that appears often when associated with the Delac at this time. The Crawling Shadow encapsulates the Delac takeover of Avarest and its many other hive industries and interests. It remains unknown whether this was the name of an elite organization of infiltrators, a single powerful individual, or even a means of waging clandestine war. Only that when enemies sought to impede the advancement of House Delac, it was often this Crawling Shadow that they faced. Unfortunately, history doesn't record Vortus' final fate, although it does record the fall of House Avarest in the wake of his disappearance. Official Imperial House records speak of a decline in the clan house, a failing of its leaders, and worker uprisings, rampant sabotage, and other calamitous events. That the newly christened House de Lax stepped in to save the holdings says nothing of their part in acquiring them. And of course, like everything else in its history, the story of House Avarest turned into House Delac is seldom told in the same way twice. To outsiders, the connection that the Delac have to one another is uncanny and unnatural to behold. That two Delac can seemingly communicate with one another with a look and draw others of their kind to that location without saying a word has led to some of the other clan houses concluding that they are all psychers. In this, they are both right and wrong. The gifts of the Psyker do run strong in the Delac, maybe because of their exposure to ghast industries, or something of their heritage, which has itself had lengthy contact with Psykers. However, most of them are not what the Imperium would classify as Psykers. Rather, all the Delac share a connection that comes out of their exposure to a shared consciousness called the Psychoterica. Even in the clan house, the real origins of the Psychoterica are a mystery. Held in ancient stones, dug up from the ashen waste or dredged up from the depths of the sump, the Psychoterica is a psychic echo that changes the Delac that come into contact with it. It awakens their minds to ancient memories and alters their thoughts. Those exposed to the Psychoterica share a gestalt consciousness, not as evolved or precise as telepathy nor as invasive or detectable. The shared mind allows the Delac to sense their own kind, communicate feelings and ideas, and recognize when someone else might have touched the Psychoterica like themselves. It is rumored that, long ago, an aquatic Xeno strain called the Pisceans arrived on Necromunda. Where they came from, or who and what they brought with them, remains a mystery although it is believed by the Delac that they arrived at a time when the planet still had an ocean, and made their home in the depths. So the story goes that they were violent and cunning, 
and though bored of the sea, they were skilled in the use of technology and ferociously resisted mankind's conquest of Necromunda. Ultimately leading to an uneasy truce, where men dwelt upon the planet's continents and they beneath the sea. The Delac believed that, at some point during the reign of the Iron Lords, before Necromunda was ruined by industry and war, the Piscians would vanish. Only the scattered remnants of their greatest cities are said to stay on the dry seabed of the world, and even these are said to be buried beneath meters of ash and dust. Although none have ever proven it, it is said that the Piscians did not completely disappear, however. Rather, they sought refuge in the watery heart of the subterranean oceans, far from the toxic surface seas. It was here, beneath the surface, that the Delac first encountered them and discovered, like themselves, the aquatic aliens shared a connection to the Psychoterica. It is a silent partnership that has grown over the centuries, and though the Delac have never visited the cities of the Piscians, if the cities even exist, these aquatic aliens sometimes make the journey to the surface to offer themselves to the House of Shadow. Happy Lovecraftian noises in the background. These are the ancient Piscean warriors, who come to the depths of the hives to die in the enclaves of the Delac, and have their brains removed and placed into mechanical caskets. These, in turn, are fashioned into cybernetic hunters called Piscean Spectres, who communicate with the Delac via the Psychoterica and aid them in their work. For almost three millennia, House Delac has held its place in Necromunda. In that long history, it has reinvented itself time and time again, and moved quietly in the shadows to complete its goals. Few other clan houses are even fully aware just what those goals are, only that there is something distinctly unnatural about them. While other clan houses fought for the scraps cast down from the noble houses, the House of Shadows seemed to be playing its own game. When Houses Van Zar and Escher created the Goliaths, the Delac took note but let them give birth to their doom nevertheless, knowing they were creating a rival that one day could destroy them both. When House Orlok dug too greedily and too deep in the spoil of Necromunda, unearthing things that were best left forgotten, the Delac played their part in seeing rare and terrible objects reach the hands of those that could bring them to life. And when the redemption consumed House Kodor and sent its people on a path to their own annihilation, the Delac offered aid to the pilgrims seeking to add to the ranks of the faithful. The Delac have been present on many of the great and pivotal events that have occurred over the last 3000 years on Necromunda. During the fall of Hive Arcos, they were among the few to survive the arrival of the Lord of Skin and Sinew. While on the eve of Hive Secundus falling in a blaze of atomic fire, the Delac vanished out of the Hive. As enemies, both Necromundan and Out of the Stars, have sought to destroy the Hive World, the Delac worked against them from the Shadow. Rumors have the House of Shadow both in league and working against the immortal cult of Necromunda, the great tribes of the Ash Wastes and the mutant horrors of the Underworld. If there is truth to be found in these rumors, it is only that House Delac has, at times, tipped the balance in many conflicts across the planet. Maybe for their own ends, or maybe for the advancement of Lord Helmore. Even those incidents like the Ashline Heist, when the Orlok Cheros Jal liberated the vital Maglev train shipment from the Delac, are mired in myth. Did the Orlocks actually win a great victory against the House of Shadow, as they believed, or was it merely the first step on a road which led to the Drypus incident centuries later, which saw the Imperial House publicly censure House Delac? while secretly falling into their debt. All that is known with any degree of certainty is that the House of Shadow rose quickly from obscurity to claim its place among the clan houses, and shows no sign of relinquishing its power anytime soon. To many, the Delac are as ubiquitous as the iron skies of the Hive, or the slightly wrong taste of Habwater. They are the shadow that never fades, the eyes that never blink and the whispers that never go away. Some have speculated that, when Necromunda finally dies, and nothing remains but the empty cold hives and toxic wastelands, the Delac will still be there, watching, waiting, as silent as the secrets that they keep. And this, my friends, 
has been what I wanted to tell you about the history of the House of Shadow, aka the Delac, for today. If there is any Necromundan faction with some serious Cthulhu vibes, it is definitely these guys. I mean, they seem to be friends with literal ancient fish people, for crying out loud. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. I do love Cthulhu vibes in my fiction more than most. But anyway, as always, I welcome any of your thoughts on these shady fellows in the comments below. Which of all these stories do you think has the most truth elements? Let us all know what you think. If you found this informative or entertaining, do leave a like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for future content. Thanks a lot, and the Emperor protects.